G'day everyone, Alex McKellar here again. Another Top Split TV racing replay. We're following the season this time round. We're up to round two on the Skipjack Trail. Trying to chase some championship points. We're at Daytona Moto layout, the uh, the famous layout. A big turnout tonight, actually. Strength of field was over 5,100, if you can believe it. Adam Miles put it on pole. The uh, Skip Barber community rep, of course, Adam, and uh, no slash behind the wheel. Speaking of which, Sabild Esports, Manu Luketa. He, uh, look at the distance, so four tenths behind Miles, who uh, ducked into the 56s in quality. That's insane. Um, myself, I grabbed P3. Uh, Huanchi Lin, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, he was joined me on the second row. Shorda, of course, uh, on uh, Shorda Sun on P P5 off the grid. He organises Skipjack, which I'm very grateful for. Gives me a chance to race in some really strong fields. Kaneko Sun, Masaomi Kaneko Sun, another Japanese driver coming through. Bit of pace by the look, starting out of sixth. Yamato Sun, of course, in seventh. He, uh, he's normally right up the front, so I don't know what happened there. And then the Biro King himself, Hiroki Kokubu, who uh, burst onto the scene last week and was right up near the top of the uh, overall standings. Before the, uh, the two UK and I drivers, Nathan Wade and George Maddock, uh, two really racy customers. Uh, expect to see them move forward, I would expect. Uh, my chief rival uh, in the ANZ Championship, uh, Vasco Sorosky, um, turned up to keep me company. I think he'd had a busy week and a busy weekend. We were chatting in Discord and, uh, look, I appreciated him running. Um, bit of a warm-up for him too, first race of the week, uh, hopefully on to build upon for... Uh, for SNL tonight. Xavier Sanchez, of course, big streamer from Spain. He um, uh, he started in 12th. If I go over the page, only a small field. Uh, Kuroda Sun in 13th. Otsu Sun in 14th. And ANZ's Neil Gardner, the leading the NZ bar to the ANZ. He started out at 15th. Of course, this is the uh, the Japanese strength of field race uh, on a Saturday night. If you're interested, it's about 10 p.m. Australian Eastern time, uh, typically uh, when we when we do this, and you get a look 5.1 k strength of field. Nothing to sneeze at. Good fun race, intense here. A lot of a uh, lot of battles, of course, with draft and what have you. 12 laps. And I'm chasing the points. Uh, let's see how we go with um, with our quest for points uh, in the overall championship. So we got underway. Uh, I got the jump on Manu, which put me up the inside. This was Manu's first race, actually. And um, yeah, it got me up the inside, which was good. And we were away. Down into the heavy braking zone down here. I want to get everything just right. Through there in the early stages on cold tyres. And we managed to do it. So, look. This is uh, interesting. Oh, in my mind, through here, what I'm thinking, okay, I've got a good position. P2, even better. Manu is an absolute threat at any stage of the race behind us. Luketa. Uh, Adam Miles. Uh, this is my third race with Adam this week. Actually, today. <laughs> or on the day, I should say. Um, and uh, first race, yeah, I almost felt like I, I had his number for pace. We were racing with the great Leo of Charov. Shout out to Leo, another one of my overseas sparring partners uh, who I like to chase on the coattails of. Just chase his laps, see what I can do. Great, great guy to race with and race against, obviously, but also to measure yourself against because his pace is incredible. 
Um, he and Adam and I had a race earlier in the day, and uh, look at this, Adam, really smart. Leaves me the lane to work as effectively as possible with the draft. We've got half a second on Luketa behind. And so what I do is I move up here, uh, but you see the draft really kick in and Manu comes rocketing up and actually lifts out. I leave a lane on the inside as well because at this early part of the race, what I'm thinking is, can we, you know, thin the herd a bit behind, uh, get any sort of breakaway? And it looks like we're pretty close. You've got one C coming with us, Lynn in P4. But other than that, we, you know, we're almost out to that magic second break with Kanekosan and shorter son behind in fifth and sixth. And that was the goal here because uh, I knew whilst the UK and I drivers of Wade and Maddock had qualified poorly, um, both uh, quite aggressive when coming through the pack. And I say that in, in a nice way, like uh, they race hard and they want to move forward. Uh, and you can see Wade and Maddock have already just gone past Kokobu and uh, the Pirokin moving back a bit. And, um, yeah, what it meant was I, I was hoping that we could three or four or even two uh, would have been ideal, break away and keep a gap. So you can see Kaneko in, in uh, fourth. There's a 1.2, 1.3 second gap. That's, that's enough for us to get away. Right? But in the back of my mind was... 5k soft. There's so much speed in the field, honestly. And you see Wade, he's gone up again. He's gone past Yamato Sun. He's in now in P7. Maddock hot on the heels, obviously looking to go through too. And they've done that, I think, through the chicane. Wow, and Wade's got shorter as well. So you see again, smart racing from Miles. He lets me through. I will do the same. Uh, Luketa sits high, no threat. I'll leave him the lane on the inside to take the run. I'll, from memory, I might have even lifted out here. Take the line, son, take the line. No, I'll go real hot, wide, real high, so that uh, he can come through and take the line. And see here again, 1.3, but uh, or one second almost, we've dropped uh, Lynn nearly as well. Unfortunately, uh, one second is not enough. So you can see there's about a second between Luketa and Lin. Uh, that's not enough. I was hoping the three of us could get away. Really, really was, because that really thins out the herd, as I like to say, and uh, reduces your risk exponentially. Because I can guarantee you, if and when Maddock and Wade get here, they will be pushing hard to get forward. And uh, every car you introduce into that lead pack, and look in the mirror, you can see them all behind us. <laughs> On the left-hand side, they're all lining up behind us. Um, any car you introduce into that front pack, particularly at a track like this, which finishes with a big oval section, um, yeah, absolutely introduces risk into your race. See Kuroda-san's jumped to the pits. Uh, that's unfortunate. Not sure what happened there. So hard to get consistency through the bus stop chicane. You can see it. I've dropped almost half a second there. And that was a key moment because, you know, they're eight tenths, nine tenths behind us in the draft. They're still in there. But because I was I had a poor run through there, by the time... Uh, Miles opens up to let me through. I wasn't sure if he was going to, but he did. By the time he opens up and let me through, uh, it was too late for the, the return pass. I really wanted him in front because he had the pace. Uh, but I stayed down uh, and then came up to take the line. Uh, and that's where it all sort of came a bit unstuck. Good run through turn two there. I'm good with that. As in, I'm okay with my own efforts through there. Not so great. Yeah, really terrible run uh, through, <coughs> excuse me, through turn three. Just really bad, and I've butchered it. We're down to a second. 
the three of us. Not much chop through there, and we're already down to eight tenths, and it's all on me. My plans come unstuck. I, I oh, look, and I run a terribly through there, and I think at this stage I'm oh, again. And at this stage, I'm on the radio apologising for a terrible lap, and I didn't even do much better there. Oh, honestly, it was just horrible. <laughs> I felt that my whole strategy just unravelling, and it was all on, my, on the back of my own shoulders. And all of a sudden, yeah, seven tenths back to Lynn and Kaneko, son, and Maddock and Wade right there. Decent run through the bus stop, but all too late. Look at the skips in the background. There's a long line of them queuing up. Oh, I was gutted at that point because I just thought, oh, Alex, what have you done? And I just felt like lifting out and letting those two go and see what they could do with it. Manu, uh, this was, like I said, his first race of the week and he was uh, happy enough to sit. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going to sit. I don't want to be on the front and cost us even more time. And then you can see how much it closes up in that massive draft. This is the first track in a long time where we've had such an impact of draft. My strategy in a pack or in the race here throughout my uh, the racing I've done here this week, it's only been three races, was if need to be, if I'm battling through turn one and two, try as much as I can to hug the inside. It's my theory with uh, pack racing into, into crunch zones or into well, potential crunch zones, literally, is to usually take the inside unless absolutely necessary, whether I'm forced to take the outside or it's necessary in the context of the final stages of the race, for example, where the battle's on for position. So at this point, I'm sort of uh, trying to recover uh, the mindset as much as anything uh, and starting to think about all right there's a big pack here already Maddox in P5 like I said he's the one uh, along with uh, Wade to watch when they get here they will um, again look to move forward they're already up five positions in the case of Maddox that's exactly what I mean he's a guy who if he doesn't go well in quality he will push forward he's got good pace uh, and he's willing to make the moves Someone like me who just wants to sit here and work through the strategy and partnership almost with the folks around me. Uh, Matic, I think, will do that, but he's got to get there first, right, in this case. And up five positions, starting 10th, that's a long way down. But again, I think this might have been his first race of the week, and it's uh, a 5k soft. It's easy to start 10th. There's nothing in it, right? So, um, and this is where it gets interesting. Luketa sees uh, Maddock coming as well and stays on the inside and uh, there's no room at the inn for Mikella. Look at the orange car, Maddock straight into it. And we're going two wide, three wide at times. You see straight away the conversation in this front pack has changed. I'm still side by side with Maddock on my left. Uh, I've, I've had to go around the outside, which is not my preferred line. I leave him a lane on the outside. Manu locks up. You can see he's already thinking. The inside right's locked up. He's off his line and watching his mirrors potentially, not just able to run lines. And you can see immediately the nature of the conversation has changed from orderly, structured, get from flag to flag as fast as you can to, OK, guys, now you've got to start thinking. You've got to start using all your skills. Um, and interestingly, I thought Lynn did really well. He uh, got back up the inside of Matic who was um, uh, battling with me. I forced him to the outside at, uh, at turn three and Lynn took full advantage. Strong move by Lynn, I thought. Yeah, but straight away now, we're, we're coming to the end of the first half of the race and the entire nature of the, the almost relaxed pace uh, up front has changed and, and uh, Miles almost got away. You can see he's nine tenths by the time he got here. I was never gonna push uh, Manu through the uh, middle sectors there after the run that I had uh, defending from Maddox. Uh, but I was also hoping that he would catch um, Miles. But interestingly here as well, um, he, whilst he's in the draft and he's caught up a 10th, look at, look at the rubber band that's just 
dragging me straight up. And he, again, leaves me the lane to really close the gap. And it also has the potential for us, you know, if things go all right, to, uh, to get away from the guys behind. It's that strong a draft here. So I, you can see I'm holding inside. I really starting to think, oh, I don't want to get burnt again because I got hung out to dry on the outside. It was really, really interesting. That, that whole uh, leave the inside for your, uh, your rival, uh, but the guy you've got a, a, a loose or tentative truce with in trying to strategically move away from the rest of the field. Um, we did that again, and then all of a sudden the timing was such that the chasing pack just arrived and just really, really changed it. It was fascinating. So now, um, strategy shift. I'm thinking I want to be in um, the front two, preferably, maybe third. Last lap, you probably want to be third if it's a three-car battle or a four-car battle because of the way the, the draft works, as we've already seen. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of the goal here. But each and every lap from here is going to be a bit of a draft lottery. Now I move to the left here so as not to get too close through the bus stop, uh, maintain a bit of visibility uh, for my marks. Because I mean, you've got to hit four apexes through there in quick succession in fourth gear with the rear sliding around like nobody's business. I take a bit of a high line here not to attack too early because the thing is, I probably don't want to double draft here anymore because of a double draft you saw last time I got caught out. So I'm now a uh, yellow line dude. Yellow line's mine, don't bother, because I ain't giving it up. <laughs> That's, I'm not getting hung out to dry. There's so much risk with all the traffic washing out. Adam's realised that, and he's gone, oh, okay. Nature's changed. All right, he's gone side by side with me. But the risk is so much more on the outside than it is on the inside. If I make a mistake and push out into him, um, and it gets exponentially greater risk or increased risk every uh, car you move back in the field. So despite having uh, really cost us the breakaway early on, um, I wanted to be up the front, in the front too, and that was my strategy about how to do it. Coming down into the unique, unique section of this seldom used track. I forgot to change gear here. For some reason I just went, Oh yeah, I won't change down. So I just let Adam through and apologised again. I don't know what I was thinking there. Pressure got to me or something. Might have been the point where my wife decided to come in for a chat for the, <laughs> for the first time all night during the most intense race of the week. Oh, I can't really blame her. I think that was all on me. So again... Uh, timing the run with the draft there. Trying to have good visibility through the bus stops. So hard to get consistent through here and so important. Uh, anyone who's done any laps here on your own and watch the Delta just tumble to the red side of things with a poor exit from uh, from the, uh, the bus stop mode. It's just, you know, crushing when you're on a good lap. Now, what does Adam do here? Yes, he opens up again. It's interesting, yeah. I, I would at this stage be starting to make people go around the outside. And you can see again, I'm, I'm Captain Yellow Line here. And you can see Manu's trying to follow because the guys behind have caught back up. Maddock, you can see, just behind Manu. And we had a bit of a settled couple of laps there, but it's all starting to uh, to heat up a bit now as Miles is back into third for the first time in the race. Luquette has made his move. I think he's, uh, he could see, it's interesting. You could see him shift, dare I say, shift gears, pardon the pun, shift um, his intensity when the, the guys behind closed up and were a threat. Uh, and it absolutely makes sense. And that uh, shows a good thinking man, a good thinking racer. And Miles for the first time, back down into third. 
At that point, you wonder what's going through his mind. I managed to make a sector in the middle work kind of okay and come out half a second in front. Oh, I've done some laps here this week, so I was, I was disappointed to uh, miss so badly on a couple of occasions. Decent run without being fantastic through there. Now again, I, I've decided that Amman is holding high there, trying to time his run. I decide to hold the yellow line again. And Manu straight away goes the outside. Holding the yellow line, as in right on the yellow line here, is a little bit slower than not. And you can see I'm just getting swamped already. There's two bites, three wide with Matic on the outside. And Manu's come down, and I'm thinking, oh, here we go. And I can't break the way I want to break because there's two cars in front of me. And look at Matic around the outside. Tough to get it done around the outside, but he's kind of making it work. Luquette has got the better run out of two. On the run down to three, I just had to let him go, and suddenly I've gone from first to fourth and defending from Lynn behind me. I had to uh, take a tighter line of the apex there just to discourage him from having a look. And it's lap 10. Two to go after this, and I'm down to fourth. Oh, I was starting to get pretty nervous. I'm thinking, oh, those quality guys in front of me and real threats behind. What do I do? I'm in fourth. How does the draft lottery play out in that sense? Tough from here. It all starts, though, from hitting your marks. And uh, look, I'm already half a second behind. I'm licking my wounds at this point. Felt a bit shell-shocked, actually. Um... But paying the inside there did not help me because the draft was so strong. All three of them went by. And the smart two in front of me, Miles and um, Luketa, straight down in front of me. And, oh, uh, yeah, look, I was committed to the inside there. Uh, and, yeah, but it, it hurt. It hurt to be staring at three cars in front with uh, a couple to go. And you see, I'm a fair way back. Four tenths back. And the draft, whilst it's strong, until... It runs out. So you see Miles sticking to his strategy of opening up. They've all still got drafts. So I'm not catching them fast. Now that they're all spread out, I, the draft really starts to kick in. I'm on the left. I'm going to go the inside and bang, they all come down on top. And I've got no chance. So I'm thinking, oh, that draft just has not worked. Maddock went through and forward starting from where I was the lap before and I went nowhere. So I was really starting to get worried and started to push the point. I'm side by side with Miles here thinking, oh, I probably need to push the point. Do I go around the outside? So yeah, I do a break deep. I leave the inside. I've got to get back into the line. I can't have Lynn push me back to fifth. So I, yeah, I come back across, make sure that there's nothing for him to look at. There's no way I can do anything from fifth with one and a half to go. And my strategy last uh, last lap is Maddox chucks a cone at me. Um, didn't work because I was too far back. So immediately now I think, well, this is it. I've got to move forward this lap. And then if I'm any chance, the last lap got to be in the right position. So I've closed up and I'm focused at this point on staying much closer to these guys, right? I'm about three tenths and trying to push to stay close. I'm not gonna minimize draft so much here. I'm gonna stay close as I can. Take my luck with, uh, with spotting apexes and whatnot, but I was four tenths at this point last lap. Uh, I'm two tenths this time coming through the bus stop. I'm not worried about one X's or anything else. I just wanna be close on exit and be in that pack, not trying to catch it. It's the only way, right? And see, Lynn behind is now four tenths and dropping, whereas I'm moving forward. You can see the difference that two tenths makes. Miles now hugging the inside, leaves me the outside, and I'm going side draft, side draft. Maddox comes up and gives me, he thinks about cutting me off there, but leaves a lane there on the outside, and I'll go full, <laughs> full tilt around the outside. I'm still hearing on inside call, inside call. I think it's too wide at this point. And I've got uh, uh, Miles on the inside. 
Vaquetta and Maddox still racing behind and I managed to get up to second which is fantastic for the final lap. Third probably would have been the best but uh, I'll tell you what I'll take second over fourth coming into the, the final draft lottery that's for sure. I'll take ticket number two. Thank you sir. Anyway so um, now it's all about <laughs> How do we uh, how do we play this one out uh, for that final run to the line? It all starts here with um, getting this middle sector right. But see, I've let it get out to about four tenths. In an earlier race, couple of races I did with Adam, uh, there was a lot of ducks and drakes, and we lost both. We lost out both times. Once to Leo, and once to Yamato son. And um, but. I think we both learned, well certainly, I was hoping that Adam shifted his mindset, so I've let it get out to half a second here. This was pretty deliberate on my part because I wanted to arrive with heavy draft at the end, or as late as I could, and I knew Adam, he was either going to lift or he wasn't, because he lifted before, and now this is it. He's kept it pinned, this is the best draft I'm going to get, about five tenths, five and a half tenths. Manu's trying to box me in. It's going to be a matter of going under Adam because uh, you're allowed to go under the yellow line on the flat and in the tri-oval. But Adam leaves me a lane and bang, straight away. Manu's not far enough forward. Adam it just opens up for me and I'm going through. I'm side by side with Manu. Maddox on the outside is going to be... Oh, I... second. That was tight. Look at the gap. That was uh, intense. Look at the gap. Crazy stuff. Inside, uh, inside a hundred, the first, the top three. Inside a, a tenth for the top four. Amazing stuff. It was, uh, yeah, crazy. All right, let's um, let's go and take a look at um all right so if we go uh far chase we might just bring that view oh no that's not what i want uh i should have probably set this up before i started right um let's no no yeah this is what i want there we go Okay, go back down there. Oh no, I might just, no, yeah, that'll do. All right, so um, let's talk about this run to the line. So it all starts uh, back here. So as I was sort of clumsily talking my way through, I let it get out to about half a second. That was the max that I wanted to do because um, I don't want, I want Adam to give me a draft, and but I don't want the double draft for him to be able to come back. Um, so, and you can see uh, there's four, five, six cars all queued up. Okay. So, as the draft starts playing, Manu's nice and close. He goes up and boxes me in, which is fine. I wonder if I can just move a little bit forward. All right. He boxes me in, which is fine. And here comes George. So Manu's busily boxing me in. You can see Adam's moved open, uh, moved down below the yellow line, shortest track distance for the guy who's got no draft. And all of a sudden, Manu and I, oh, look, I'm in front. He's in front. George is coming. George is coming. George is in front. Man is coming back. There's, look how tight it is. Like, you, <laughs> you couldn't fit more skippies in there if you wanted to. Look at this. That, look, look at it. <laughs> like, and the, the, at this point, you know, we're four wide. Right? Yeah, four wide, nuts. Um, and you can see the, the finish line up ahead. 
Uh, and as we progress, I don't, look at this. This is crazy. Little, not little, little net codes and stuff along the way, but bang. That, um, that, my friends, is what, um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go, uh, sorry, like this and like this. Look at that finish. Amazing stuff. Like, amazing. Look how tight that is. That's crazy. That's your top four right there. And, uh, yeah, anyway. Interesting. It's, uh, yeah. All right, let's, um, let's get to, uh, that and let's check out our results if it'll let me there we go Martin Luketa Saybelt Esports ahead of herself um, by four one thousandths of a second and you saw what that looked like Maddock like I said he was always going to be part of it once he got there that's how he races does it in good spirit and just gets amongst it Adam Miles after being you know well, pardon the pun, mate. Miles ahead on pole, but miles ahead racing. Just that tenth, just under a tenth. Handkerchief over the top four. You want to see Lynn race smart or race down to fifth. Uh, Karnek or son. Bursting onto the scene. Car 14 and a 15 car field. Finishes six. Good points in that. Sanchez, big streamer from Spain. Seventh, Wade. I was surprised. I thought he might be more amongst it with um with Maddock, actually. I don't know what... He, he sort of moved forward and then stopped, so I'm not sure what happened there. I mean, Sanchez was up plenty as well from, from memory. Uh, oh, no, only two spots. I suppose it's a small field. Um, surprisingly, Yamato-san didn't have the pace this week. I don't know if he's done a lot of laps or not, um, but even in quali, um, I, I, I qualified him twice, which is two more than I've done in a long time. Um, Piro King, the Piro King, uh, Kokobu, he's down in 10th, um, perhaps wanting to do better tonight than SNL. Shorter Sun, down in 11th. Vasco had a tough night out, and again, I, I enjoyed his company, and uh, I, uh, I think he might put in a few laps today and be big in SNL tonight. Uh, Captain 499 down in 13th, Otsu and Kuroda round out the field now we're going to follow the the uh, championship run as we said um last time out so this was the race results you see it was a 5100 and something strength of field um so uh up here right um got some good eye rating but uh 257 points that is officially my highest point scorer in a single race uh, best result, and then a 5,100 strength of field, you know, not surprisingly. Interesting, though, because it was a 15-car field, um, the point spread's quite high, so Manu got bulk points at uh, 277. Uh, Vasco's uh, result, unfortunately, for the ANZ challenge means he's got to do well tonight to uh, stay in amongst it. Now, if we um, switch over to the championship, okay, so this was, um, so you may remember at the end of the race last week, we were sitting in first before SNL. This is at the end of the racing last week, and I was sitting in, uh, in fourth overall uh, on 238 points. Christian Perez, who won SNL. Ahead of Sasaki, he's doing really well. He finished second overall last season just by a point. Uh, and then Vasco got me. He had a great result in the warm-up race to SNL. I think he finished second from memory uh, in between Perez and Luqueta. Fantastic drive, really fantastic drive, and put him in second. Now, at this point in the week, again, SNL still to run on the back of uh, his great racing last week and the win in the race you just saw. Luqueta sits on top. I'm sitting in second, but um, the big guns have still got to come out in Sunday Night Lights. So again, if I can stay in the top five and in amongst it, I'll be I'll be pretty happy uh, and looking to really uh, set myself up for the rest of the season. So folks, 
Uh, that's where we're at after two weeks of sun of uh, Sunday night lights. Oh, we haven't had the two weeks yet, but um, that's where we're at after two weeks uh, in my season. Hoping to build on it more. Hoping you'll join us too. If you like that sort of racing, come and check out Sunday Night Lights on Top Split TV tonight on Twitch. That's Top Split TV. Just check us out on Twitch, 9.15 p.m. Australian Eastern Time, which is GMT plus 10 at the moment. Uh, the best skippy action in town. Last week was a 5,400 plus strength of field to kick off the season. And the racing was immense. Uh, it was really fantastic. So anyway, otherwise, of course, uh, keep following the season here each week on the back of the skipjack races uh, and we're going to see where we can get but thank you for joining us uh, and I'm Alex McKellar and until next time I will say ciao for now